So every business is different. And on today's episode, we dive deep on how we do things at Ace Ornamental, how we've implemented a positive culture that is more like a family, giving everybody an opportunity to thrive, grow, and create. We also talk about how the next person that you might need to get the job done that you're looking for to buy yourself time might be right inside of your business, but you might not see it. Enjoy today's episode, guys. There's a lot of great value. So let's jump in. Are you ready to grow? The Plant Movement with Willie Rodriguez of A's Ornamental Nursery in sunny South Florida is the podcast for those in the nursery business, garden centers, landscapers, power growers, and plant enthusiasts. Willie is a passionate leader in the plant movement and has helped others grow their business into multi-million dollar companies. This show will save you time, money, and headaches through top-notch education and by connecting you to experts in the industry. Let's grow. Here's your host, Willie Rodriguez. What's up, guys? I hope you guys are having an awesome day. Welcome to another episode of the Plan Movement Podcast. I'm your host, Willie Rodriguez. Today, we got my brother from another mother. What's up? Mr. Eddie Gonzalez, that he's always behind the camera. Most for you guys time. that are wondering who puts all this stuff together and all the stuff on Instagram and Facebook, TikTok, LinkedIn, websites, <laughs> Mr. Eddie, Hello. Mr. Eddie G. Yeah. Guys, so today we want to talk about a topic that might be, you know, common sense, common sense to some, but not common sense to all. The opportunities that are right in front of you when it comes to fulfilling a position when you're trying to grow your business using the staff that you currently have. Right. Or going out, sometimes you got to fulfill it with someone from the outside. Correct. But for the most part, that's something that I have been able to do. Yes, looking within your business. Looking within the business, understanding and knowing who works with you. Know what they like to do, what hobbies they like, what interests they have, where they would like to be in five years. Exactly. So as you go creating the path Mm -hmm. for your future, you can implement these people into helping the whole business grow and also helping them level up. Exactly. Which is something that I love. And we have so many stories of people that we've been able to do that with and just help them along their road and their journey that we feel like it's something that we can talk about today to give you guys just a different outlook and help you think more broad and more open to the potential of using someone that's already on staff and just getting them leveled up. It's like taking a moment to see where you're at and where you want to be as a business or a business Mm -hmm. owner and looking within your business with the staff that you already have to see where they want to be in their future to start with and with the business their positions Mm -hmm. all of that stuff let's jump in let's talk about that time and that one moment in your business where somebody that was Mm -hmm. in a very important role who handled the sales Mm -hmm. was leaving and you know what what we went through as a team to solve that problem since it was occurring so quickly yes Let's, let's start there yeah so we had uh someone that was basically my right-hand man to allow me to sit here and do podcasts and do video recordings and just go after the next thing. Mm -hmm. And it was someone that was brought on to relieve me of time so I can have my time to grow whatever I was trying to do next. And his wife was pregnant. Her family lives in another state. She wanted to be with her family. It's very understandable. At the end of the day, I always push my guys to do what's right. And I always tell them that family comes first. You know, so if they have to leave, it is what it is. You know, I don't expect nobody to be here their whole life anyway. So he tells me, he goes, hey, Willie, I'm leaving. And I'm like, you're leaving? He's like, yeah, I'm leaving. This person was my right-hand man, answered the phones, did sales, Sales. um, directed the trucks, directed the guys outside loading the trucks, making sure the orders were right. He had a lot of stuff on his plate, Mm -hmm. A a lot of responsibility. So when he told me that, I said, how long? He goes, oh, I'm leaving in in a week. It was a week, right? Two weeks. Two weeks. I'm leaving in two weeks. I'm like, all right, cool. So instantly. You know, being a problem solver, which is what an entrepreneur should be, is, okay, we have a lot of problems to solve, so let's see how we're going to take care of it. So we gathered the team. We gathered the team, and the first thing was, okay, a bunch of people are going to get leveled up right now. (laughs) Because I had his salary that I was no longer going to need to pay anymore, and it was a very nice, chunky salary. So I was like, all right, perfect. This salary can get dispersed amongst others and give them the opportunity to now jump into a way bigger salary, and not just a salary, but also a position that they can have a larger title, bigger title. They can take on more, grow, learn more about the industry, learn more about the business, and help everything 
transfer smoothly. So we had a meeting. It was it was like five of us, mm-hmm. six of us. It wasn't everybody. It was just the key players, the big bigger, you know, the higher ups. And uh, we basically sat down. He was there as well, and we went through just everything that that one person did. I asked instead of me appointing, I said, who would be up to take this on, and who would be up to take this on, and this on, and this on, and I let them make a decision. Because as an owner of a business, you can put stuff on people. They might not want to do it, even though they're qualified. They have to want to do it. It has to come out naturally from them. So each picked what they wanted to do as a responsibility. It was like a what, like an hour and a half meeting. Yes. After that, it was basically him coaching them for the next two weeks. So I instantly took everything away from him, all responsibilities, no answering phones, no directing of nothing, no doing nothing. And it was instantly, let me go talk to everyone else, let them know what the game plan is. So they know that now someone else is telling them to do this and that. So they're not shook trying to figure out why this is happening. That day it started and he instantly became a coach for the next two weeks. With all that being done, there was still one key position that wasn't fulfilled, which, which was, was the sales. Which was sales, right? Mm-hmm. So you can bring on. Well, for someone. you, no. For you, you you decided that you were going to take it up. I was going to take it on myself again. back on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I, guys, when, when you start off, you do it all. It was just going to take some time to find that person, mm-hmm. train that person. And I was just going to take on those responsibilities. And it is what it is. It's okay. Thank God I'm here to be the backup. And Eddie pointed out to me, he's like, hey, the secretary has been here for a year and a half. She's hungry. She answers the phone. She knows what's going on. She's learned so much. No, she's going above and beyond. Above and beyond. Yeah, she's going out to look at the plants and learning Everything. the plants. She Everything. She'll walk doing. around with clients, all this mm-hmm. stuff, which is what a salesperson does. Right. So she was already showing those tendencies without her even knowing that it was going to be for a greater purpose. Because she didn't know what the future had for her. Exactly. So he told me, he's like, hey, you should really talk consider, to her and consider, consider her mm-hmm. and think about it and see what you think and all of this stuff. So I was like, all right, you know what, man? Thank you for telling me that. We talked to her and she said yes, because she's a go-getter. Yes, she is. She's going to be on the episode later, guys. You're going to be able to hear yeah, her If you story. guys call us, you guys know who she is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, so basically she did that. Her her pay got doubled overnight. She has just so much opportunity. You know, like right now I asked her, I said, hey, we're going to do a podcast about this. Would you be up to coming on? And she put a big smile on her face and she goes, of course. And like that fearless, limitless mindset. You don't have to be an entrepreneur to have that. Right. You know, you, you just got to want it. You know, and then I know everything about her, just so much about her that that's what I love about the culture that's here is that we all know what our hobbies are. We all know what's going on in each other's lives. We all know all of this different stuff that a lot of people might keep to themselves. Yeah, and where we want to be in life. Where we want to be in life. And I that, think that's really important. That's yeah. very important because yeah. as opportunities arise, you can appoint those people to now get them in that place right. where they would like to be. You know, and then like I explained to her, I said, the sky's the limit. You know, when I first uh, hired her, I asked her, I said, do you believe in God? Because that's that's a big thing uh, here. You know, you don't want to work with someone that doesn't align with just your beliefs. Beliefs don't, you know, it's not 100% a make or break. Your beliefs could be whatever. But your beliefs can be whatever, yeah. but, you know, you got to align. Everybody needs to align with each other, and especially in an office setting. You want to make sure that everyone mingles well together, flows well together, and you want to have that family environment because right. they're together for nine, ten hours a day day exactly so you want to make sure that you don't get those phone calls of the negativity because that's just more stuff on your plate that you have to deal with you know which happens you know it happens it happens regardless it happens every once in a while but for the most part in the office setting needs to be like very on point upbeat powerful energetic fun exciting at least that's what's been created for this office i needed another buyer to help out because sales were climbing the buyers that we had needed help plants were really hard to find so i was like the only way we can get everything done in a day or try to attempt to get everything done in a day that we had to do is to have more help. I talked to one of the guys that he was working planting plants. He spoke English, spoke Spanish, had a driver's license. We put him on training. Within three months, he was doing everything himself. He knew names of the plants. He knew how to go out and scope plants, how to talk to clients, how to talk to the vendors, the owners of the nurseries, how to pull plants, what a pretty plant was, what an ugly plant was, what the bugs were, what signs to look out for for root decay. All of these different things that we want our guys to be qualified in that way we can give that 100 percent of customer satisfaction and not have to backtrack and lose money by shipping something that isn't right or that doesn't look right or wasn't what the customer wanted he was able to come on that was a huge blessing so i mean as i'm listening to you talk i guess this podcast is becoming more than just about looking within your business it's also about culture 
culture. It's the culture that you establish within your business as, like, let's say, an owner. Let's say we're speaking in regards to Willie's perspective, which is, you know, being the owner of the business and the relationship he actually establishes with his employees. Mm -hmm. Not every business has the opportunity to speak to their boss in the way that, you know, Willie and his employees' relationship is. Willie established a culture in which, you know, he lets his employees come talk to him. And that should be something that you should establish in your business if you want to grow in that type of method. If you just want to be the boss and tell people what to do, that's one thing. But if you want to have a good relationship within the business in general, you know, like a good culture that people feel comfortable enough to say where they're at in life and where they want to be, that just creates the craziest amount of opportunity for your business to be a pleasant place to work at and also grow in a, an amazing way. You have to have good relationship with your employees to the point where it's like they could tell you, you know, how they feel. They could tell you, hey, boss, I'm not really happy, you know, doing what I'm doing right now. Is it a possibility that maybe I could try it and do something else? That's just going to allow a person that could be at your business for one year and could be a lifelong, you know, business partner with you. What you're creating with your culture is what you could expect for the rest of your business life. A hundred percent. That's very well said. I see it very big. You're put in a position of power as a boss and you have the power within your business to do whatever it is you want. Knowing where they would like to be and, and helping them get there is what creates that real positive culture, helping them move forward. Because for you guys listening, you might know how to get your credit right. right. And you might know how to grow and you might have established you know, buying real estate and you've established companies and you're successful. Everyone would like to know just how to like achieve things. And I've talked right. to some of them where they're like, I would love to buy real estate one day, but, but they tell me, but it, that's never going to happen. And it's like, yeah, you know that I can help you get there in five years. What do you mean? Yeah. Five years. I'll give you the game plan. Like we've talked before game plans. Five years, you'll have your first apartment or your first house or whatever it may be that you can start renting out. I wouldn't live in it because a house to me is not a, a great investment. It's an investment that doesn't stop asking you for things. But if you're going to rent it, now you're looking at it as an investment. And from there, it can work. And we've been able to help people do that, which is insane. You know, I feel God at the end of the day puts people in positions of power and your, your obligation is to give back. Your obligation is to give back. And those people that have those positive cultures, those people that are really growing, that have the the people on staff that are better than them, because we hear that. I hear that a lot. Have people around you that can do things better than you can. Of course. That is all from a positive culture. You're not going to get somebody that's a beast doing one thing and he's in a negative or she is in a negative state of mind, state of mind mm -hmm. in a negative atmosphere with a boss that doesn't you know, support them and appreciate them. Right you're not going to get 100% out of them. 100%. You're not even going to get 60%. Correct. You're going to get those people that are like, all right, Come to I, work. Got, I got nine hours. All right, let's yeah. see. Let me see, you know. And exactly. you, you walk in, they're scrolling on yeah. on, yeah. on social media. Yeah. And that's not what you want. Yeah, you you're want not getting the full people. potential of, a, no. of, of an employee, which could also be considered your friend. Yeah. yeah, which is perfect example of you and I. Yeah. Like our culture within each other. Yeah, I started as, you know, we were I was going to be your media guy. We were going to take care of A's Ornamental and the things that we would put out to grow your business, of course. Mm -hmm. But we became more than that. And not only are we friends, mm -hmm. but we created something together, which is the Plant Movement Podcast. It came from Willie's idea to be out there in media, seeing that there's no media out there for, you know, the plant industry. And my mind come into the sense of, yo, you want to speak and this is what you want. You want to be the voice. You want to be a voice for the industry. And what better way than a podcast? So with that idea and you wanting to do what you want to do and grasp the industry, yeah, speak no, for the industry. Well, yeah, speak for us. Speak for the green industry. Uh, we created something that's powerful, that's creating a network of friendship, you know, with so many people. Like, because it's more than just, you know, us talking about a business and what they do. No, we're establishing a friendship with uh, a different aspect of the industry. And you know, relationships. Like, yeah, the relationships that are create. more powerful than, than money at the end of yeah, you and I right now are creating something that, you know, that's going to last a long time that you could come back to our first, second, third, fourth, fifth episode and you can learn something from it. You're getting a different culture, a different mindset, a different perspective from somebody who's also in the industry that also has a business that's also, you know, working towards something and you get to hear how they started. You could tell that what Willie does with his, you know, culture as in the business, it's also implemented in the way that we interview. It relates. You know, we're asking questions. We want to know a little bit more about them. We want to know how they did start, where they're going, what their plans are, what they see for the future. That is a culture that you got to establish within yourself. If you want to be a successful, happy business owner, yeah. that's not concerned about the people. Oh my God, now I got to go look for somebody else because they lasted two weeks. They lasted three weeks. Creating a 
a community within your business can help you elevate for a long time. Not just, you know, momentarily, you know, a year, oh, now I got to go look for more people. If you create a good culture, you're creating a family. A family. You're creating a family within your business. A hundred percent. I love everything you said, and it's very true. I want to know the nitty gritty. And not everybody does you know, that, man. People start off in business about money and money, money, money. And I got to the point where throughout my whole career, I've always loved people. Mm -hmm. And money was one of those things where it's like, man, you know what it is to hit hundred thousand dollars, to hit half a million dollars, to hit a million dollars, 10 million, 20, mm -hmm. you know? And then it's like, that doesn't fulfill me. You can give me a hundred million dollars tomorrow. And yeah, it'll be exciting, but it doesn't fulfill me. And what fulfills me is, is people and creating opportunities for people, giving back. That, that that to me is something that I love and that's why the atmosphere here is so good. Right. That's why we still have half of the staff is from day, you know, from day one. Exactly. Not day one, day one but as they went as we went growing and they got hired, they haven't gone anywhere. Just because you care and you show that you care. That to me is something that I've seen that really, really, really makes a big impact and creating those opportunities. Eddie's a videographer, photographer that's been his passion since he was young, picked up a camera. He just changed his life. So I had been talking to him, thinking of ideas to get him on because I wanted to do something with him. And I was like, man. And this is our this is This is a long yeah, time yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah. This is a long time this ago. before any of this. You know, yeah. because I've always had that entrepreneur mind. And I'm always down to go after anything that I'm passionate about. Right. So it was it was giving him a couple ideas. He's like, no, that's not the right one. I'm like, yeah, you're right. That's not the right one. <laughs> But then the right one did come right. and it took a lot for him to come on because he had just moved to a management position. He had been there for a couple of years, but he knew that I wasn't going to let him down and we trusted each other. And he knew that at least I had at least a salary to pay him, <laughs> knew that we were moving. So he made the leap and, and here we are today, you know, and that goes with just everybody. I can sit here and talk about all of our guys' stories. Right. You know, uh, one of our guys wanted to make more money. He goes, what can I do, boss? I said, where you live, there's some land. Why don't you get that land, grow some seven gallons? something that we don't grow that we move a lot of and start growing them i'll give you the money if you need me to he did it on his own and he's done like five crops already and that gives him an extra 20 grand a year he doesn't have to worry about employees because he does it on his own he doesn't have to worry about who am i going to sell to who am i going to collect payment from the check bounce he doesn't have to worry about none of that why because i love him yeah. and i want him to grow and i see his family and i see his kids and you also seen that he had that type of knowledge to be able to grow to be able to do that yeah. and he's honest yeah. you know i don't have to worry about him stealing a bag of fertilizer right. you know it goes back to that a lot of people that i know companies that fire you if you are trying to become a grower if you guys are enjoying the content that we're putting out here on the plant movement podcast make sure to subscribe and follow giving us a five-star review it really goes a long way also share it with someone that can benefit from this content as always we want to continue connecting you with people in the green industry and make sure you get in touch if you want to jump on the podcast let's go they hear wind that you have a nursery or you're starting a little nursery and they'll fire you i don't like that i feel like you can have that you know, it's not that copycat thing, right. you know, and it's not too close to home. It's you can have that, but let's just do it the right way. And if you want me to be involved, which I think would be the best thing for you, let's do it in a way that makes sense for both parties where you can still work here, but still have that. And it's similar, but it's different, you know, and creating that opportunity doesn't have to come out of, let's say this business. It can come out of, let's say, creating an opportunity to fulfill someone's order. That's what I really love with that individual. And that's happened already with three of the individuals. And all three have been playing playing the right card. I've also had guys that don't play right and they lose their opportunity. Right. And that happens too. But going back to what you're talking about, you want to be happy, you want to be fulfilled, you want to be all this. For you guys listening, if you are working somewhere where you do not feel like your boss is taking care of you, they don't treat you the way that you should be treated, and you know inside of you that you are a person of value, it's time to save up the game plan. Save up three months. Yeah, it's time to create a game plan. It's to create a game plan, which is save three to six months of what your bills are, and that is all to have a clear mind. And then you make connections along the way, and you go out after what you want to do because I know the economy is the way it is today but people that are moving forward which is where you want to be they are always looking for someone that can help them always and all this is referring to small smaller businesses because mm -hmm. it does become a little harder when it comes to big businesses mm -hmm. 
But if you, you're operating a small business and your team could not be up to 60 to 100, you should really look into creating or establishing better relationships with the people that you're currently working with. And give them opportunities to level up. You know, that day, four people got leveled up and each one made an extra 20 to 30 a year and just by just by being there, showing who they are, me knowing who they are, right. and them giving their 100% yeah, every and day. And none of them hesitated and, or were like, no, 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 that's not something. The relationship you establish with, with these people allowed this to be a lot easier for them. Yeah. It's not like they were worried that, oh my God, now I'm going to get all this work thrown on top of me. No, you, they knew that whatever you throw at them, they're going to be compensated for. Yeah, and not just compensated, but they knew that they no, were gonna be able to attempt. And they're not worried about that though. Yeah. They they know yeah. that it's like it's not it's not gonna be because that's the relationship overlooked. That's yeah. what I'm trying to say. 100%. It's not gonna be overlooked. Hundred percent. It could be compensated in many ways, but they know that you're gonna take care of them if they take care of this problem that you're having. Yeah. And everything worked out. You know, I, I mean, it's it's it still guidance. Out. Yeah, yeah. No, no, it's it's good yeah. today. Yeah. And other systems like that, I I love that. You yeah. know, I love the pain. Right. <laughs> the pain for me is something that I love yeah. because I know that great things happen when there's pain. Yeah. You know, Overcoming things evolve, things. things grow, and it just things becomes change. something so much better. How many things did we implement yeah. that are now more on the tech side? Of course. You know, just uh, iPads and laptops and, yeah. and, and, and programs that everyone knows what's going on. Exactly. And you touch one thing and everybody sees it. And, mm -hmm. you know, how much we evolve, we evolve, evolve with, with it. Yeah, with everything that happens. With everything. Exactly. That's why pain From to me is something great. <laughs> So you got to think about it. For me, it's like we have grown so much. You know, the, the, the plant movement has grown. But when it comes to the company, which is Azo Amano, that has allowed me to even soak up on all this knowledge and all the chaos and all the, just everything that I've been through in my life, we've grown mm -hmm. over the past, you know, five years immensely. And you want to have a team that can grow with the company mm -hmm. and also take on more heat and more fire. You know, like... I, the other day, we, we were slow. There was not much going on. And what we had going on, there was errors starting to arise. Mm. And, <laughs> and uh, one of the staff members asked me, why do you think that is, boss? And I said, because we're slow. <laughs> <laughs> I said, people are more laid back. Mm -hmm. Because the, the culture we have here is a fire, fast-paced culture mm -hmm. where everybody's busy, everybody's doing something. There's a lot of things to get done. I always feel like I'm behind, even though we're not behind. But, you know, there's deadlines to meet and we have X amount of hours to do so. So everyone's on fire, 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 fire. And you want to have a team that believes in you, they trust you, and they know that the, what you're doing behind the scenes when they don't see you is something to allow them to continue to grow. You know, I think about, I think about the team a lot, man. I pray for the team every night. You know, I even pray for our clients and I pray for everyone watching the podcast just because there's there's so much to learn. There's so much to do. And, you know, I, I believe in my team. You know, I, I call them the dream team, you know, and I don't call them the dream team to try to make them seem like someone they're not. Like I've told the buyers, I was like, guys, I trust you so much. Like you guys pull things off that I don't think you were going to be able to pull off and you pull it off so fast. I was like, I'm so confident. I'll, if we had like a game show. <laughs> Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, find the plants, right. you know? Like I would I would 100% put you in and I would feel that we would be at the top just because of what we've implemented. You know, mm -hmm. think about it. Like how many creative things have you come up with as other members yeah. of the team? that like, hey, boss, I think we could do it like this. Hey, where yeah. I worked before, it was like this. And we could, oh yeah, let's do it. Boom, 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 boom. And all of that is like what is here today mm -hmm. isn't based off of one person's thoughts or ideas. Mm -hmm. It's based off of the positive culture an open atmosphere yeah. that people can speak. There's no, oh my gosh, I got to go talk to the boss now. It's, hey boss, can I talk to you for five minutes? Yeah, mm -hmm. what happened? Where Wherever they need, whatever they need, it's like if I can fulfill that, right. I'm going to do it. Whether it's an opportunity for them to climb and I'll tell them, hey, right now, not yet because I don't see where I can put you, but give me, just give me some time. And if God wants that, that's exactly what's going to happen. Literally, that's how things are ran here. You know? We have a very creative, open atmosphere creative or, open atmosphere yeah. and 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 it is a family at the end of the day and mm -hmm. things are talked about that other people would be in a conference room with a lock and key and a soundproof room because they wouldn't want nobody to hear it i can speak about it freely here about money about moves buying things mm -hmm. about anything you know not everything is spoken freely but yeah. for the most part a lot of things that aren't spoken about freely in other places are spoken about freely here because the opinions of you know, the, the people that are better than you in certain things and they start, you give them that create, you know, that, that space to create. Mm -hmm. 
that's how beautiful things are made. You know, oh, and for you everything too. Because I mean, I brought <laughs> how many ideas already to you, and you listen. Yeah, like that's the difference. Like listening to your employees. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah and and try it. Like if if they're thinking of a certain thing that could. Could it could probably level up your business and you you don't even, you don't know, even it. know it. Yeah, there's so many things like the team up that I implemented that yeah. I that I found in my other business. That yeah. I came. That's something that has helped us so many things. Like stay on track with everything. Yeah. You know, and just so many things that we've done here. Yeah. Like just taking that opportunity to listen to new ideas yeah. that could help productivity. Yeah. And it goes with planting as well. Yeah. Like, productivity, dude. Yeah. It's, it's about productivity. I've had guys mm-hmm. tell me, boss, look, we're doing it like this, but look, if we do it like this, we'll be able to get X amount more planning in a day. You're right. I like it. Thank you, man. Thank yeah. you. Let's do it. Let's do it like that. Boom. And that's Let's how go you go mm-hmm. creating things and, and everything just runs smoother, more time effective, even cost effective. Right. You know, like we have properties now that we were spraying. We had a, we had a sprayer, traditional sprayer. But for you guys listening, a sprayer pumps the pressure with the actual liquid. Okay, so to save money, we got a blower because a blower uses air mm-hmm. and it mists everything. So now your cost drops a lot. It's a, it's yeah, the blower is 30 to 50 grand, but you pick it back up over time. It's an investment that the blower will last you 10 years and you pick up your money in the first year because right. you're not spending it on chemicals. And we've also gone to the point that we've done whole irrigation systems, injection irrigation systems. So we can feed the plants and do so much by just having a tank with a valve that when you turn on the pump, you open the valve and it goes sucking all of the product into your irrigation. All of that was was an idea from someone that wanted to help improve the productivity. Help of improve. Mm-hmm. Why? Because of just the atmosphere and the opportunity to. It's been a blessing and mm-hmm. I wouldn't have it any other way. I enjoy coming to work. I enjoy having a high energy level all day long and it's, and it's, and it's seen throughout everyone mm-hmm. here. Mm-hmm. No, even if the, someone's having a bad day, they still, they're able to shut off right. that negative bad day or that bad thing that happened just because of the positivity that's here. And the culture. Yeah. Just making people feel included. Yeah. And so many people have leveled up. Mm-hmm. And for you guys listening, like really think, you know, you might have someone that can really, really benefit what you got going on or really come through, really help, whether it's taking on phone calls, whether it's sending out emails, whether it's doing invoices. I know so many people that are owner operators and it's like, maybe there's that one person that you can pay them more. And now they go and they do what they got to do. And now they tagged on something else. And now you don't got to do invoices anymore. Yeah, you free up time. You and know? you also give them an opportunity to grow with themselves. An opportunity to grow with themselves. Driving deliveries, all that stuff. Like uh, for me, it's now I'm, I'm all about my time because time is so limited. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I can't do this forever. And it's like, I have so much I want to do, so much I want to accomplish that I need time. And how do you do that? By trusting in others, creating that to be able to trust in them. Right. And for them to trust in you, I love just having that within the business because to me, it's it's priceless, man. I know that I can leave for a week and everything's going to be okay. Right. You know, even though I might feel like, oh my gosh, because <laughs> that's just how it is. Mm-hmm. But I know that everyone is in a place where they feel appreciated, whatever they need to grow, which is another thing. I love asking the employees, hey, how's everything? Good. Do you need anything? Is there anything that you might need that can make your day more effective yeah more productive more productive yes what do you need this 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 all right let's go let's get it boom 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 and in a day either that day or in a couple of days that we got to order online it's here yes yeah, reinvesting into your business reinvesting mm-hmm. reinvesting and the number one thing that most companies have as their number one let's say a uh, bill is payroll right so if you can implement things to cut that which is using technology which is using products mm-hmm. which is using anything like that it's a no-brainer like it doesn't take more than a split second to make the decision of yes, let's do it. I want to take a moment and bring on Daisy. For those of you that call and order plants, she is uh, on the sales team here at Ace Ornamental, and her story is really crazy. And she's leveled up big time. I mean, she's just a great person. Everyone loves her. I get mm-hmm. random texts from people all the time, customers that say that how much they love her. Mm -hmm. and that they're so happy that she's here with us. So we're going to bring her on just so she can talk about how being at the right place at the right time, opening up, talking about it, has been able to get her where she is today. Without further ado, let's let's go get Daisy. Let's go get Daisy. So guys, this is Miss Daisy. She is uh, the head of sales here at Ace Ornamental. And her story is literally insane from the moment that she sent me a message on WhatsApp. I just felt that she was the right person because at the time we had about 20 to 30 people reach out. 
And I didn't feel that energy that I felt when I when she sent me that message. I just instantly knew. I was like, if this girl actually shows up, I feel like this is the one. <laughs> <laughs> to fulfill what we needed to fulfill at that time. And we've you haven't been here. She's been working, guys. Daisy, say hi real quick. Hi to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> we've been talking about a positive culture within the business. And we've also talked about how talking to your employees and having that bond with them. You understand their goals. You understand their dreams. You understand their beliefs. You understand, you know, just everything. And it becomes more of a family type of a scenario at work where you want to you know climb and that's not for everybody but for those that want to climb opportunities arise and when they arise we're looking inside of the business to fulfill those positions because not everyone has money to go hire another person and pay them 30 40 50 80 a hundred thousand dollars a year whatever it might be that you can just have someone already in the company that you know has the traits or someone might tell you like what happened in your specific scenario and now you had the opportunity to level up. I wanted to talk to you and ask you about that, about opportunities. What opportunities have you had by working in a place that is a free-spirited, open environment that's like a family? So, yeah, <laughs> I started as... Can I'll you cut it? it? Yeah. <laughs> 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 guys we're just throwing her on the spot so she's never ever ever sat in this chair and never ever been in front of the mic and never had the headphones on never yeah so you started off i started i remember i sent you a text message mm -hmm. we put out an ad and we put out um a sign which works really well we put a sign out on the fence that we we're looking for a secretary Yes. And you called in reference to that position. Knowing about computers, you know, yeah. you went to school, you learned about computers, you learned about all that stuff. But what you were working wasn't that position. No. So my first experience with anything related to nursery plants, it was with you mm -hmm. that you gave me the opportunity to start. Mm -hmm. I started as a secretary mm -hmm. doing accounts receivable. Mm -hmm. and then invoicing and learning quickbooks learning and... quickbooks learning all that mm -hmm. you know the technology the system that you use for mm -hmm. doing invoicing mm -hmm. and anything related so that's how i started at first it was kind of challenging the first like months two months i came like every day i was very nervous <laughs> <laughs> Every day I was very nervous, but you know, as time passed, you know, the months passed because I've been here for two years and a few months. Mm -hmm. So I started to, you know, gather like confidence. Mm -hmm. I got confidence, and you gave me, you know, the opportunity to be a better person. Mm -hmm. And to learn. And to learn, yeah, to learn. Because mm -hmm. I have learned a lot from you. And thank you a lot, Willie. No, thank you, Daisy. Uh, we also talked about how we had that one person that was my right-hand man leave. And we had to think quick on what we can do to fulfill that person's position, which you know who I'm talking about. And there was so many things that that person had on their plate. Yeah. right so many uh things that they were taking care of and we had to disperse it amongst four people so you were one of those people that were in the meeting when we had that hour and a half meeting and i asked would you who would want to take on what and you said that you were willing to take on one of these roles and eddie's one of them that also reached out and he told me hey i think daisy might fit the bill to do this at least she can try yeah. and attempt it and see how that, how it goes which is sales taking on sales which sales is intimidating because there's so much yeah it is that goes very, into sales it was very intimidating very intimidating well not not really because you know i was uh, for the past year i was doing you know talking with people on mm -hmm. the phone collecting payments and mm -hmm. their invoices so I did have a little bit of experience on that, so it was intimidating, but not that much. Not that to much. To be honest. To be honest. Yeah. And and you like just thinking outside the box because you're a very quiet person, very, you know, timid, maybe even shy, yes. right? So you've had to overcome so many things inside of you, all those feelings. You've had to learn how to be like, no, no, these guys believe in me. Yes. And I don't know why I'm feeling like this. It's okay. Like, I can ask all the questions I have to ask. Yeah. I, 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 sometimes I do feel intimidated, mm -hmm. especially with new customers. Mm -hmm. cause, uh, I mean, it's the first time doing a podcast and yeah. I, <laughs> I'm you're nervous. Good. You're good. You're good. You're good. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it's, it's very intimidating. But you feel like you've adapted. Yeah, true. Yeah. And definitely. you feel more confident because you have more knowledge. I do. I feel very, very confident. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes I get nervous. I mm -hmm. don't feel... 100 percent, but uh, i always try my best mm -hmm. and i'm not scared anymore you're not scared anymore you overcame those fears yes 
which is what everyone I feel like has when they jump into something new, you know, especially you not knowing anything about the industry and then jumping into the industry, learning about it, and then now thrown into the fire is what I call yeah, it. True. Because I didn't know anything about plants, mm -hmm. even though I have lived in homestead for your whole life. For life, but I didn't know anything about anything related to nursery stuff. But now you know a lot. Yes, I know a lot. And it's I even, can say it. <laughs> yeah, and it's gotten to the point too that now you're even you know directing people. You know, little little Daisy over here is telling a six foot grown man <laughs> what he needs to do. You know, so you've taken on so much more responsibility than just sales, you know, because sales and have so much that go into it. People think, oh, I'm a salesperson just sells and hangs up and then passes it on to the next person. But sometimes that's not the case. The case is you take on more responsibilities than a salesperson should have or normally has, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so when you guys call, this is Daisy, and I'm very blessed to have her here, and we love her. She's our sister. She's our little sister, so you can just think about all the poor things that she has to listen to <laughs> <laughs> with a bunch of guys in an office. But she fits the bill. Daisy is a perfect example of someone that is looking for that opportunity to grow within your business from just leveling them up and giving them that opportunity, guiding them along the way. You can't just throw people in the fire and expect them to know, but they go learning, they go growing and getting confidence, which is what you need. You gotta have a confident salesperson. So her being the salesperson now has that confidence where if someone's looking for a 30 inch cocoa plum in three gallons, she can chuckle and be like, <laughs> 30 inch in a three? Because that doesn't exist. So. <laughs> So now she knows and she knows plant names and she's learned so much and she has, the, you know, it doesn't stop because there's so much more growth and Daisy's a person that she, she's learned to deal with that pressure, which a lot of people cannot deal with pressure. She's learned how to deal with the pressure and shrug it off her shoulders and know sure. that it's going to be okay. You know, there's, it's okay. Let me just go. Yeah. Mond she, Mondays she are very tough. Mondays are Mondays tough. Are very tough. <laughs> but she gets through it. You get through yeah. it. And she puts on a smile. So, every day. Yeah. Every day. <laughs> So this is Miss Daisy. So for those of you guys that are looking to create new opportunities for the people that are within or need to fulfill a position that can save you time and just help grow the business in a positive way, take some of the things that we talked about today, reference them to you and your life and see what you can do to just be a better human, a better boss, think outside the box, look within, it can save you money, time, and just so much and create a bond with you know your staff that is priceless. Yep. At the end of the day, like said, so the first thing is first stop and look within your business yeah. first. Yeah. yeah, stop, look within, and see what you need and who can help you fulfill that. Because I'm almost positive that every one of us has someone that is hungry and wants to level up and mm -hmm. they want to be a part of what you're doing. If what you're doing is something positive, <laughs> because mm -hmm. positivity is is the light at the end of the day, and go for it, guys. Mm -hmm. Believe in your believe in your staff and give opportunities and give opportunities. You can't. It's not about yourself. It's about so much more. You're put in that position to create opportunities. That's what it's about. Giving back and giving the opportunities to those around you. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. God bless. Stay tuned. This episode is going to air this week. The next episode, guys, is with David from Plantiful. The his story is insane. The product that he has created is in the tech space for specifically growers. Mm -hmm. And I love that because I love seeing people that are not in this industry at all have no background in the industry, but for some reason, they're called to create something inspiring, powerful, and great for this industry because that's exactly what this industry is. So if you are thinking about doing something to dive into this industry, connect with the right people, go after it, talk, and get it going. Don't wait because time is ticking. It never stops. God bless you guys. Stay tuned and you'll see us on the next one. Thank you for listening to this edition of The Plant Movement. Willie and Eddie invite you to connect with them on Instagram at both The Plant Movement Podcast and A's Ornamental Nursery. Those links are in the show description. Please leave us a well-worded five-star review on Apple Podcasts to help others find the show. And remember to tap the follow button so that you'll be notified when the next edition of The Plant Movement is available.